Do you want to hear about my adventure trying to score a swimsuit? No? Well, tough luck, I'm telling you anyway. Yesterday morning, after I'd snagged a cranberry scone from a coffee joint, I sat on a wall looking out at the magnificent Pacific and faced the fact that getting in the water and swimming with dolphins, which I haven't actually seen any yet, was not something I could do in uh, green corduroy jeans. I needed a bathing suit. And so I took a little hike to scope out the possibilities and discovered that this is one ritzy neighborhood. I mean, man, I found this area that I guess you'd call a boardwalk. It's got people selling jewelry and souvenirs and Hawaiian clothes from carts and stalls. But there are also restaurants and office buildings and boutiques along both sides of it, and everything is so, so expensive. I cruised between the buildings, scoping things out, trying to look like I belonged. What a joke, huh? Me and my greasy hair and cap, overloaded backpack, and filthy shoes looking like I belonged. At least I wasn't wearing my jacket like the bums I saw. Uh, or pushing a whole shopping cart of junk. I'm never going to be one of those bag ladies with a whole shopping cart of junk, you hear me? Never, never, never. But back to what I was telling you. The people who shop this boardwalk have serious bucks, which is why stores can charge $75 for a cruddy bathing suit. Do you know how many days I could eat off of 75 bucks? The price didn't really matter, I guess. I, was planning to pay f I wasn't planning to pay for it anyhow. It was just the idea of people actually spending that much on a bathing suit that shocked me. I made myself get over it, though, and started scoping out the stalls. I didn't stay too long at any of them. I just tried to zero in on the suits that would fit me, then moved on before I, someone chewed me away. I felt really self-conscious, like everyone was looking at me, thinking, Is she a punk? A hood? Is she... homeless? One thing punks and hoods and homeless never do is smile. So I, so I always forced myself to do just that whenever someone's scoping me out, wondering if I'm trying to lift something. It really throws them off. So that's what I did on the boardwalk. I even asked some of the hawk-eyed vendors, how are you today? Like it was perfectly normal for a person in my condition to be pawing through their pricey merchandise. It didn't make me feel any better though. You should see the people here. I'm not talking about the homeless people, which there are quite a lot of actually. I'm talking about everybody else. They're not beach bums or surfers or even California girls. Everybody looks like they're right out of a fashion magazine. Hair, makeup, nails, clothes. I felt like a mangy, mangy mutt trotting through a party of poodles. Not that poodles are bad dogs. Poodles are actually great dogs. They're smart and they're friendly and they've got the most amazing eyelashes ever. Did you know that a poodle's eyelashes have to be clipped or they get in their eyes? It's like regular hair that just keeps growing and growing. What's stupid about poodles is not the poodle, it's the people who get a hold of the poodle. All the grooming and fussing and nail painting and, ad and adornments. They turn a dog into a doll. It's ridiculous! And I kept telling myself that these highly groomed people I was seeing were, in fact, just people. But I didn't feel it inside me. I felt like no matter what I did, I could never fit in. They'd been born with pedigree papers. I was a runaway mutt from the pound. And as stupid as this is, when you're a mangy, a mangy, mangy, I don't know, mutt rubbing shoulders with prissy poodles, you're the one who feels ridiculous. Man, I feel bummed out now. How'd I get on all that, anyway? I was trying to tell you a funny story that doesn't have anything to do with dogs. It actually has to do with cats. And I'm going to try to get in the bedroom room by powering through and telling you, uh, telling you about it. First, I should probably go get some water. That wasn't part of the book, obviously. I mean, where is she going to go to get water? That was just me saying that. Here goes. On this ritzy boardwalk, they've got all sorts of decorations like flags and metal art and foundations and stuff. They've also got entertainment. I saw my first ever real mariachi band. You know, guys wearing big sombreros and sparkly ga ga gacho outfits, strumming guitars and singing Mexican songs. It was like something out of a movie. I also saw a man slapping bongos, another man playing some weird drum shaker things, a woman playing guitar. Lots of musicians. They had jars up for tips, but they weren't beggars or anything. They seemed to be working together, too, because every once in a while, they'd all pick up their stuff and rotate to a new place. It was weird, but they seemed to know where to go and what to do. Not all of them were musicians. I saw an artist who draws cartoony faces, a juggler, a puppeteer, and a couple of magicians. One of them was more like a clown with a top hat. Uh, he did this stupid trick, uh, when he pushed a blue scarf into a tube. Did abracadabras over it, then pulled out a red scarf. That's all he seems to know how to do. That and honk a bike horn. So the entertainment wasn't great or anything, or anything, except for this one gypsy-looking dude who had psychic kitties. 
Psychic kitties. Isn't that wild? They're fortune telling cats, and this is how it works. You roll up two two dollars and tell them, um, and hold. Gosh dang it! Sorry. You roll up two dollars and hold them out to one of the cats. The ca cat takes your money, puts it down between the booth wall, then hands you a rolled up piece of paper that has your fortune on it. The cats weren't puppets either. I watched them patter all around the booth. That gypsy dude made a lot of money, way more than the, than the musicians. Hey, maybe I should start a booth of my own. My son could read. Amazing. Stupendous. Eighth wonder of the world. Come and see the one and only Gypsy Girl and her spectacular psychic doggies. Nah, forget it. It's lame compared to psychic kitties. People expect a dog to be able to retrieve things. Seeing a cat do it is what's weird. Anyway, that was the funny thing I wanted to tell you. Now back to the bathing suit. After scoping out the whole boardwalk and watching Psychic Kitties in action, I decided to forget trying to score a suit from a cart vendor. They watched like a hawk. I, bought a, I thought a better plan would be to snag one from a rack that was parked outside one of the boardwalk surf shops. You know how stores sometimes roll a rack or two outside their front door so you can see the kind of stuff they're selling inside their front door? One of those kinds of racks. I'd passed by this one store about four times and no one was ever out front. So I looked through the bathing suits on the rack and found one that I thought would fit. I spent a long time doing it too and no one came out to shoo me away. I should have just snagged it right then, but I put it at the end of the rack and left, just in case someone was watching me through the, uh, tinted store windows. Over the next couple of hours, I passed by that rack at least four more times. The suit was just waiting for me to snag it, and the more time and the more I saw it, the more I wanted it. It was blue and sparkly and seemed to be the perfect suit to wear while swimming with dolphins. This probably won't make sense to you, but I was really nervous about lifting that suit. I don't like stealing stuff, believe it or not. I, um, I do it, and I'm good at it, but that doesn't mean I like it. And normally I don't feel bad about it because I steal for survival, not for fun. Usually I'm just so hungry or cold or whatever that I can't be distracted by thinking that what I'm doing is wrong. But this sparkly blue swimsuit was not something I needed for survival. It was just something I wanted. I told myself that I'd come a long way to swim with dolphins and that I couldn't exactly do it in my underwear and there must be a huge markup on these bathing suits. And that, come on, how much would it actually hurt the store if one went missing? But it still felt wrong. That didn't stop me from wanting it though. And it didn't stop me from trying to steal it. It was 4 o'clock when I finally decided to do it. Everything seemed to be lining up for me. The mariachi band had moved right across the way and was making a lot of noise with the singing and strumming. I knew a shortcut out of the boardwalk in case I got chased. And it was getting late. I was hungry. I couldn't go swimming with dolphins. I had to find something to eat. I had to steal something to eat. After that, I had a real lousy night, which I'm not even going to get into. What I am going to tell you is that this morning I finally broke down and put that stupid suit on. I had to tie the shoulder straps together in, in back with a piece of string so it wouldn't fall off. And I felt like a giant piece of ugly seaweed in it. But I put it on and I poked my stuff on the beach with, like everyone else does. Then I hiked across the sand to the sea. And you know what? The water is cold and so salty and full of sand and foam and seaweed. And as far as I could see, no dolphins. <laughs>